Welcome to Create the Best Me. I am Carmen Haycox, a personal development coach, and I am so excited to be connecting with you today. Whether you're listening to the podcast or joining us on YouTube, my goal is to help women navigate through midlife challenges with compassion, inspiration, and empowering conversation. Each week, we'll dive into thought-provoking topics designed to build self-confidence, overcome invisible women syndrome, and find the courage to create the best version of yourself. I'll also be joined by expert guests who will share the wisdom and insights. So make yourself comfortable and let's embark on this journey together. Hello, beautiful ladies, and welcome to another episode of Create the Best Me, where we empower women in midlife to dream big and live a life filled with joy and fulfillment. I am your host, Carmen Hecox, and today we have a special guest, Paige Logan, a talented hairstylist and the owner of Salone Wilder Salon in Sacramento. Paige has worked her magic on my hair, transforming it from a damaged overprocessed hair to gorgeous, healthy hair you see today. In this episode, we'll dive into the importance of communication with your hairstylist, how to avoid hair disasters, and maintaining healthy hair in midlife. So let's get started and learn from the expert herself. Hey, Paige Logan, welcome to Create the Best Me. I am so happy to have you on the oh, show. Thank you for having me, Carmen. I'm excited to be here. Great. So for the people that don't know you, or I know you and I love <laughs> you, but tell the audience a little bit about yourself. I own Sloan Wilder Salon in Sacramento. I've owned it for the last two and a half years, and I've been a hairstylist for 15 years plus. And kind of how I got into the whole hair business is I lived in a really small town of 3,500 people up in Bernie, California, and my cousin worked at AJF Salon in downtown Sac. And it used to be owned, it was owned by the Federico family. And so I would go to her house over the summers and she would give me these crazy hairdos. And I was like one of the only girls from my town that had this like wild eccentric hair. It was like, you know, runway hair. <laughs> and I just loved her ability to create something new and make people feel great. And so by my senior year, I knew I definitely wanted to be a hairstylist. And at the time, I thought, I'm going to move to this big, huge city and do this whole hair dream. And so I did. And my parents got me an apartment here. I got into Federico Beauty School and I loved it. And then right out of beauty school, I ended up working for a man named Tosh. And he was a very famous stylist in Sacramento. And I loved him. And he taught me. I learned more over that three years than I ever could have imagined. And he was so passionate about hair and he just loved it. And uh, my love grew through working with him. So after I transitioned up from working from him, I went on to work at a couple different salons. I worked in San Francisco for a while on the cutting edge of a new product line, which was really exciting at the time. And then over the last two years, I've opened up a salon. It's named after my daughter and I'm really proud of it. And it's in the heart of Midtown. And I've always loved working in Midtown. It makes you feel like you're a part of something. So yeah, I'm very excited to be here and share with you about stuff about hair. That is so cool that you mentored under an expert or someone who was so passionate about the same thing that you're passionate about. So it's just like you're plain. Right. Yeah. He was a gifted artist yeah. and I mean, people would travel and at the time paid so much to get a haircut from him. And he was booked almost every 30 minutes. And I was his assistant and he just, he loved it. And I definitely got that passion from him and carry that on to what I do now. So how do you stay updated with the latest trends and techniques? That is so true. Hair is constantly changing. And the good part about hair nowadays is you can follow your famous hairstylists online and people will give you formulas and ideas and there's so much creativity and classes you can find online. And then also just continuing to stay up on the trends by taking classes and really learning from people you work with too. And here is a collaborative thing. And there are certain things you don't always think of to do. And you work with your friends at your work and online. And, you know, it makes you a better stylist. Do you have a favorite hair trend? I do. I tend to like the real, like the lived in color, something a little bit more natural. I love the lob right now. The lob is kind of made a return. And yeah, I, I like probably a more natural look that looks like it's like a spruced up version of your normal self. <laughs> so let me tell you a little story. Uh, there was a woman in midlife 
who was frustrated with her hair because she felt like it lost its texture, shine, but most of all, it was gray. She wondered if she stopped dyeing her hair, would the texture and shine be restored? Would her hair stop thinning out because she was getting, having some thinning out issues? And she questioned whether she was ready for gray hair. She noticed there was a trend or there's been a trend with younger women who purposely have dyed their hair gray, white, silver. And one day as she was scrolling through social media, she noticed many women in midlife were scheduling appointments to see a popular hairstylist famously known for dyeing women's hair gray. If this renowned hairstylist was dyeing women's hair gray and they didn't have to wait months or years to get to that, why not ask her own hairstylist? Unbeknownst to her, the reason women flock from all over the world to see this particular hairstylist, because going gray is not a simple task and it can be very harmful for mature hair. Too bad she learned the hard way and was left with overprocessed, stretchy, dry, frizzy, and unmanageable hair that continues to break with the slight touch of her hand. She wondered if following this crazy trend was the beginning of living with damaged hair. And you know, Paige, that, that was me. That was you. That person was definitely you. <laughs> <laughs> and so the reason I asked you to come on to the show is because that is how you and I met. We met through this horror story of me trying to follow this trend. So let's go back to back then when you and I first met back in 2020 and you saw this woman walk in your salon with the most fried, dry hair you've ever seen. I mean, look at those pictures right there. I mean, right uh -huh. there's what walked yes. in your shop. <laughs> I remember at the time when you walked in, it's like, we, did, we didn't even realize that there was another stylist that worked there with me, Mac, and we, we had no idea how bad it was until you actually sat down in the chair. It's like, and then we started feeling through your hair and I'm, you know, you had told me you wanted to go gray and just the concern in both of our faces after touching your hair because it really had been over processed and it was kind of, you would come from dark hair, so maybe three levels lighter, that like medium reddish but it was extremely damaged and very concerning to start taking you to the next step. So we, yeah, we had a very long conversation on how to approach that because, you know, it wasn't a simple task. Yeah. And I, I remember sitting in the chair and looking at you and said, this is the mess I have. I want to go gray. I want you to dye my hair gray. And so I had told you, this is what mm -hmm. I want. And so you had to try to figure out, okay, how do I do this? So Tell me, what were you so, thinking? So, I mean, definitely concerned and really trying to work through your hair and see what the integrity felt like and trying to be very honest with you that what we were going to do would damage your hair even further and it was going to be a lot longer process than what it was. And I know I remember looking at my coworker and being like, okay, help me come up with like a way to get her there with doing the least amount of damage to her hair because you were, it was... It, the texture didn't even, it was like crunchy in your hand. And so, but we also wanted to make you look better and feel better that day. So it was like the least of the evil approaches, right? To try and get your hair fixed and in the direction that you wanted. Yeah, I remember, to be honest with you, I was kind of embarrassed to go out because I'm used to having hair that looks like Beautiful it does hair, right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I could not, like I said, just touching it, it broke brushing it, washing it, it broke. And I was scared to even put it in a ponytail because when I take the wrap that I'd use for my hair, there was yeah. hair in there. And that's why I went to you because I'm like, this girl's got to save me. <laughs> well, thankfully your hair is back to being beautiful, but I mean, it did take us a very long time. And we used the least invasive product that we could to start transitioning you to that gray and just making your color a little bit more even because you just had tons of bands of different shades in your hair. And so I know we took you like our first step was taking you just a little bit more ashy, a little bit more cool, going in the gray direction. And um, it wasn't your dream color. And all of us were like, this is the first step to get your hair in the right direction. But, you know, I tried to make it very clear when we did talk, it wasn't going to be a color that you were in love with or was your ultimate. It was just the first part of the journey of it. <laughs> So coming from a professional as yourself, so that way a listener or a viewer doesn't have to go through the traumatic event that I went through, what would you suggest someone do or explore before sitting in that chair or walking in that 
salon and telling their hairdresser, I have dark hair color, make my hair gray. I mean, I think an important thing, and like you said, the chasing the trend thing, I think that chasing the trend can be a dangerous game to play because you're looking at these people, for one, their photos have been edited, there's different lighting, you may look completely different from them. And so, but you're wanting this hair color. And so really trying to be honest with yourself, not bringing in a photo with somebody that has all this hair and maybe has different skin tones and expecting it to look the same because um, it's, it definitely is, it's different for each person. And so really trying to find a look that looks best on you. And I would say when you come into your stylist, bringing plenty of photos, maybe buying some cheap wigs on Amazon to kind of try out, um, doing a few different things. And then there's apps you can use as well, a Facetune app, different color lines, Redkin, L'Oreal have apps as well that you can use to kind of see what looks good on you. But really be honest with yourself too on the type of who you're seeing and is their hair similar. Exactly. You try to satisfy me. And I remember you told me getting there is going to be a process because I want it to be a safe process for you. I don't want to continue to harm your hair. And so you said, let's start off with ash and we'll slowly, maybe it may take about a year because there's a lot of damage there to get mm -hmm. there. And so I bought into what you said, okay, this is a slow process. And like you had mentioned, once I was in maybe three or four months into it, I told you, I said, I don't like this ash. And you said, this is getting you to gray. So this is a couple of hues before you get to gray and we're getting you there. And I realized through this process that you sold to me, that this is how we're going to get there, that this wasn't a color that I was ready to accept yes. for me. I mean, maybe some women, they'll accept it, but wasn't the me that I'm used to seeing in the mirror. And I think that's such an important part is, you know, with the trend chasing and thinking you might like something is like, whatever you love on yourself is projected. And so if you don't like your hair color, you're going to feel crummy and not great about yourself. And I, I have to be honest, I was happy when you said you didn't want to go to a great direction. I was like, goodness, because I did think that you looked better with so many works on your face. And I didn't think it was the time that you needed to transition. And you felt so much better. I remember when we put color back into your hair. It was like, oh my gosh, I feel like myself again. Your husband loved it. It projected all over you that you felt like you owned your hair again. And so the difference between the now and the ash is night and day. <laughs> I felt more yeah. like me. And you helped me. You didn't tell me, no, I'm not going to do it. You didn't play like teacher. This is what you're going to do. And this is how it's going to be. You listen to me. And then you allowed me to accept that this was me. This isn't who I am. This isn't who I mm. want to be. Yeah. I mean, it's a difficult role as a stylist is trying to appease your client and make them happy and give them what they want, but also running that line with, I know you're not going to like it. And sometimes it is experimenting and trying new things that maybe you think they don't like. And, you know, there's times when I'm wrong too, they might end up loving the color that I wasn't sure of. So it's, it's a good uh, reason to communicate and trust each other, but also be very transparent and honest about how, what, what it takes to get there. So someone like me who made the decision that I'm not ready to go there, how can women like me that are in midlife or even like some young women, because I started graying when I was 21 years old, how can they hide their gray hair? And what are some tips for maintaining their gray? Yeah, hair? I mean, I would say depending on the level of gray you have, it also might need to come in every three to four weeks. It might be maybe a four to six weeks, maybe eight weeks. So really depending on the amount you have, because, you know, with the gray hair, you get that really strong line of demarcation as it starts to grow out. And then you feel bad about yourself. It's like you're like, feel like you got to hide the gray. So I mean, really just a simple root spray touch up is a great thing to use in between. And it does give like a weird texture, maybe like how dry shampoo would do. So I would say part your hair exactly how you want it parted for that day and then spray on your hairline and around the edges. And then if you're not in for a refresh as soon as you like, at least you're not walking around for three to four weeks feeling like, you know, kind of crummy. So, and then I would also say never touch up your, you know, I have, they have all these new hair care kits to touch up your color on your own. And I would highly suggest never doing that and getting back in the salon sooner. So, and in between just using that spray. <laughs> so you're saying like buying stuff at the big box store, don't buy the stuff at the big box store or even some of the beauty supply places never. and doing it at home because 
someone like me is not familiar with the products that are being put into my I, hair? I would say never use a professional product or box dye on your hair because it takes the hairstylist a very long time to repair it. And a lot of times people will do it. They'll touch up the roots and it goes really dark. And then they want highlights with it too. And so you're trying to break through that box dye. And it's better just to use that spray cover up in the meantime and leave the color to the professionals. So what if I have a lot of gray hair and I want to maybe transition slowly or maybe work with it versus against it? I think that's one of my favorite ways for people to go gray. I know there's people that are just like, I'm not dying my hair anymore. And then they go through three or three years of having this gray and this color hair separated and that looks odd. And who wants to go with it looking bad for that long, right? Because that's fully letting your hair grow into the gray with the color still on the bottom. So the best way that I would say to transition is maybe going to, if you really were like, I'm ready to be gray, going to a hairstyle that strictly focuses on gray. Because it is a very hard technique. And those stylists, like the stylist that you looked up online, there's somebody that that is what they do all the time. It's their main source of income. It's their specialization. So if you are going to go all at once, but I think a very easy transition to do would be doing like low lights, darker pieces in the hair to kind of break it up and or, and or highlights. And so that lets your line, that line of demarcation that I keep talking about, kind of grow out softer versus you having that harsh one that you're just waiting for it to all grow out. So just a few pieces of light, a few pieces of dark in there. It'll help break up that line. And it's not something you need to do very often. You can go into the salon every three or four months, throw in a couple of foils with the highlights or low lights. It'll spruce you up and it'll make it to where you can get through that awkward time period until you are all gray. So when you say for some of the people that do not know what demarcation is, you're talking about that color line that kind of, it almost looks like you're wearing a bowl over your head. It's like that color line that grows out. You know, it's like, as soon as you get with people with a lot of gray hair, your hair grows out and you have maybe two inches from your scalp that is just like this white line. And so, and it's so very obvious. And so when, if you do decide you want to go gray, just maybe putting in a few little dark pieces in there, mid-level pieces, depending on your overall hair color. Um, so that line isn't so strong. <laughs> so it makes it more uh, part of a hairstyle. Yeah, more intentional, not like you gave up on, you know, <laughs> taking care of your hair. Um, what are the common hair concerns that you see with women in midlife, including changes in texture and brittleness? I would say it's very common to lack moisture. It's like when people first start getting gray, it's like, what is happening to my hair? Of course, the gray is just, it's different than what most people are used to. And so I would say a lack in moisture, for sure. Sometimes a shine that has the issue and also a hair thinning. Fortunately for women, you know, we do have that thinning that we get sometimes around the front of our hairline on top of our scalp that um, we had really hoped would never happen. But that's the reality of it. So your hair kind of loses a little bit of that luster and vibrancy that it once had. So what do you do for some of the women that do have like a texture issue? What do you suggest that they do to kind of spruce it up, make it look more like they did 10, 20 years younger or younger 20s? So you're definitely working with your stylist and coming up with a game plan on what your hair needs because everybody's hair is different. And so what works for somebody, you might see a product online has all these great reviews, but it might not work for you. And so it's really like going in, figuring out what is going on with your particular hair. So we sell 11, what's one of my favorite products, a miracle mess. It's really, really good for hydrating. But your hair might have issues more of being, if your hair is, if you can stretch it out, it doesn't return after you stretch it out, it might need something like protein or a bond. And so that's when for like the drier hairs, you would need like a bond treatment or protein. And that will help re-strengthen the cuticle of your hair, um, getting it into a better place where the moisture mass might just be sitting on top and not fixing the real problem. So that's why you really need to go into your silence and work together to come up with, you know, a game plan. I know when I went in and I had the horrible hair told you, I am using XYZ product and it is really good. It's really expensive. And you kind of just said, okay, that's good. <laughs> that's very true. And it's like we've, over the course of the last couple of years that we've been together, have really like created this special formula that works for you. And it's like, you're on all these different products. And that's something I love about you, Carmen, is you're not afraid to try anything. And we're able to like work together as a team. And so I know that on your end, you're doing what you need to do. 
so that when you come into the salon, it's easy for me to do all the stuff like coloring your hair, highlighting it, because you're doing all the stuff at home to take care of it. But what I think is important is you mentioned that um, came with your hairstylist because the hairstylist is the expert on the hair. And I remember you would touch my hair. And every time I left your salon, I just noticed that my hair felt different. And I don't know if maybe you were doing this <laughs> behind the scenes as you were working through my hair and touching my hair. You noticed that it was lacking something, even though I was using this really expensive line. You were doing something. I'm like, I remember I'd come back to you and I'd say, hey, Paige, what did you do to my hair the last time I was here? Because it felt we were really starting to use, well, for one, bringing the shine back into your hair, doing a clear gloss through the ends, really kind of rebuilding that, making it look vibrant like you had wanted, um, and putting in a lot of moisture. I mean, prepping your hair before styling it with a multivitamin spray that really helped your hair before the styling process, and then using like smoothing serums and stuff as well that at the end your hair felt great. And so you could run your fingers through your hair, but also look styled like you wanted it to. Yeah. And I remember I told myself for a whole month, I'm only going to use the products you sell. At the time I had already had a purple shampoo to help brighten my highlights. Purple shampoo with a blue undertone. It's 11. And my hair's pretty frizzy. So you had introduced me to a frizz control shampoo. So I started using that. And then you also introduced me to the mask that you were just talking about. And so I told myself for a whole month, I am only going to use your hair products that you sell. And I remember when I went back in to get my touch up with you, you said, I don't know what you're doing to your hair because I didn't communicate this with you. You said, I don't know what you're doing to your hair, but it sure feels way different. And I said, well, you know what I've done this month or this past month? I only used your hair, your products. I stopped using the other product that costs double what yours cost. And look, you're telling me my hair feels different. And I said, and what I noticed is that when I brushed my hair or I took a shower and washed my hair, there wasn't a big old glob of hair at the bottom of the drain or in the brush. And so it's absolutely true with what you said. I listened to what you said, the products that you suggested that my hair needed. And I think it's important that you brought that up because it's things like your purple shampoo and just because the product is good and effective sometimes doesn't mean it needs to be used all the time, right? And so something like a purple shampoo, they're very drying. They brighten up your highlights. They make your blonde look really good, but they don't, they're not good for your hair long term. So, I mean, you should be using it maybe once a week. Um, you know, maybe if you're feeling you have a little bit more warmth than you desire, maybe twice, but there's certain products you don't use all the time. And that same goes to go with, um, you know, you were on a protein builder and a blonde and at a certain point, your hair has too much protein. And so when it gets to that, your hair becomes crunchy. And so that product is, in actuality, making it worse. And so if that's why it's so important to talk to your stylist about what products to use because you think you're doing this great thing, you've got, you know, you're adding this to your hair, but sometimes you can be making your hair worse. Yeah, so it's like maybe going and seeing your doctor and saying, hey, I have these symptoms and how do I get rid of them? And your doctor might say, take this, yep. this, this prescription plan. It's kind of the same thing, but you're the totally. expert. I know another thing that you recommended because of the state that my hair was in, gave me some tips as to how I can preserve or retain my hair from yeah. breaking. And I think that's important as well. Like you, when you're at home, you're not reversing all this good stuff that you do with products and taking care of your hair at the salon, but really not going to bed with wet hair. That's important. Also not tying your hair back in a tight in a tight bow, clip, anything, scrunchy, anything when your hair is wet, it shouldn't be tied back tight. Not using anything that's elastic on your hair because it's going to break that. If it's tight on your head, it's going to end up breaking all your, your hairline around that. People, funny, if they often come in, they're like, I don't know why my hair is broken. And it's exactly where their ponytail line is. And so doing stuff like that, not shampooing every single day, letting your hair grab onto its natural moisture. Another simple technique is just a silk pillow or wrapping your hair at night. That's going to help keep your hair smooth, not get crazy at night. And the silk pillow is good for your skin as well. So still a benefit. I used to always, because my husband and I walk three and a half miles every day, and I always used to wear my hair in a ponytail or a bun when we walk. And I remember you said, um, maybe do a loose braid. Try doing a loose braid. If you really need to put your hair up, do a loose braid so that there's not a lot of pulling. Yeah, just being a little bit gentle, I would say, is a good approach with your hair. 
And then the other thing I know that you had told me too, because I tend to go to sunny places a lot. You recommended that I make sure that my hair is covered, that I spray some type of protectant on my hair so that the sun didn't dry it, but also wear a hat. So it's not just for my face to block the sun from my face, but it was also to keep the sun from damaging my yeah, hair. Protecting well. your hair everywhere you go. And the sun is damaging to your hair and the chlorine is as well. So really using some type of protectant to combat that and know where you have. Good for your skin and your hair. Yeah. Kind of like the pillowcase. <laughs> what are some tips for women in midlife who are experimenting with different hair color styles? What should they consider before making such a significant change or cutting their hair drastically or color? I would say one of the first things that I noticed is, and I've had clients come in, they're having this terrible week and they just want to change their hair right then. So I would say first and foremost, never doing anything off of impulse because I think that's when you end up with styles and stuff that you don't want. You're having this emotional week or this amazing week and I want to do something new. And those impulse hair, it doesn't always work out the way that you want. And so that definitely not doing stuff on out of impulse and then really researching, seeing cuts and colors you like and understanding how that would look on your skin with your stylist as well. Really touching, maybe getting color swatches and seeing how they look. And the, a fun thing too is ordering stuff on Amazon and cheap little $10 wigs and trying them on and maybe you're wearing them through the house that day, see how you feel. So really doing research before you step into going into something new, I would say. And I know you mentioned this before that uh, making a decision that's realistic to your hair texture and volume. Yeah, I think it's important to talk with your stylist because you have a good stylist, you have a good rapport with, she feels like she can be honest with you, him or her. They, they will be able to tell you that your hair isn't anything like that. It's not realistic. To, you're never going to have that type of hair, no matter what we do, what we go through. And so, yeah, it's important to understand the reality of how your hair will look in that particular style. And it might be something that you go, oh, I want a wash and wear, but you're showing a photo of somebody that spent hours on their hair. And so understanding what it really, if your hair is like that, understanding what it would take for it to look like that on a daily basis. Exactly. The maintenance that it yeah. requires to in order to look like that. It's very rare that someone will have a style that's wash and wear and like instant. Most photos online and stuff that you're comparing it to, people are spending a little bit of time styling out. So can you provide tips for women who are nervous about trying a new hairstylist salon? How can they build trust or how can they find that right hairstylist for them? I would say looking online, looking at social media and seeing the work that these people are doing. And then I think a good approach, too, is you know, just because you set up an appointment with somebody, set up maybe a consultation, go in there, get a real feel for what they, who they are, what they do, how they make you feel when you're there. I think it's important. And sometimes you get there, you just want it done right then. But you might want to shop around and see how you feel about a particular stylist and maybe not have to rush. So maybe before you're just ready to get it done, not rushing into it, trying out a few different places, seeing how they make you feel, seeing what their work looks like, how their salon is. So that's probably would be my best advice. For someone like you, you had me come in and you saw that the hairstylist who unfortunately listened to me and gave me what I wanted when she should have said, no, I'm not doing that. How do you build trust with your clients? I've come to you and I've said, hey, Paige, I want to do this now. And I think that you and I now have that type of relationship where you can boldly tell me what you really think, as opposed to before you watch what you said. How do you build trust with clients, especially those that are brand new and are just barely coming to yeah. you? I think that transparency and honesty is very, very important. When you're honest with them about what their hair will actually turn out with, you're not disappointed in the end when they end up with something different. And so honesty, but in a soft way, I mean, you're right. When we first met, I wasn't comfortable telling you, okay, Carmen, we need to, I did it in a softer approach. Now that we've got to know each other, I can be like, okay, no more highlights this week. Or, you know, like, let's refrain off the highlights. We need to add some dimension back into it. And then you see it and you're like, oh, we did need dimension. So yeah, I mean, I think the transparency and honesty and Really making your client feel heard and understood before you're getting into, a, you know, not just, okay, what color do you want? Let's put it on. Really talking with them thoroughly about what they want, because it isn't always 
what they're seeing in a photo or what they think will look good on them isn't always what they end up loving. And so really trying to make them understand what their goal looks like while also being kind and <laughs> not hurting their feelings if you don't think it's something that look, would look good. So to wrap things up, you had mentioned that the most important thing is, well, I think the most important thing that you addressed was communication. Very important. And it's not just on one side. It's both yeah. sides. Yes. Effectively communicating through a consultation, I think, is like one of the best ways of success. Since we brought up consultation, do you know of maybe any hairdressers that are not open to a consultation because maybe they're losing money in that consultation or is there a fee? I would say some stylists do charge a consultation fee or once you book, they might waive the fee. But, you know, that might not be the stylist for you if they don't offer a consultation and you really are wanting to make a big hair change. I mean, I think it's important to make sure you have that time allotted for that conversation. And another thing that you talked about is you said possibly using an app. If you want to go white or highlights or gray. Yep. Ch check out the Facetune app. You know, L'Oreal, Red Kids, there's a lot of color lines that also show their color swatches and how they would look on you. And so then you'd be able to get a real idea of what you look like. And also, maybe you don't use your most beautiful photo for the app. Use your everyday look so it's more realistic. Do you know if these apps like L'Oreal and Redkins, are these apps available on Android and yes, Apple? Yes, definitely. Another thing that you had talked about is you said, understand the maintenance that is involved in what you decide that you want to wear. I think that's very important and it's a common mistake. People come in the salon and it's very expensive getting your hair done, but it's just like something with your car. You're really going to continue to get your oil changed on your car so your car continues to front drive. You're going to get insurance on your car. Using great product, good product at home is so important for the life of your hair. I think it's neglected a lot more than it's not because it's an added expense, but I would say work that into your budget and part of your hair cost and good product lasts a long time. And so it's worth it to be using that good product at home. I do that. In my shower, I, I have nothing but 11 in there. And I tell my husband, I tell my husband, I'm like, you're a man, but you know what? You need to use this because even men's hair breaks just like uh -huh. my hair. And I love that about you, Carmen, because you have a cocktail of products. They say it's like, if you don't only need one product, you don't only need a hydrating shampoo, a hydrating tissue, you, know, you need the frizz, you need the repair sometimes, you need the purple shampoo. And I love that you can kind of cocktail all your stuff together. You're not just only stuck on one product because only using one product for a long time isn't great for your hair either. It's really good to use variety in your hair care. Yeah. And as you can see, and I'll show my end result, my most recent when I saw you, my hair has changed significantly because... I maintain that cocktail. I might use purple shampoo, the shower, and then the next shower, I'll use a hydration and then a moisturizing, but I switch it around. The other thing I know that you had mentioned to me was that when I do use my purple shampoo, when I add the conditioner to add a mask on top of it, because the purple shampoo is very drying. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Really putting something after that purple because that purple shampoo does hurt your hair, it makes it look vibrant, but it, it does affect your hair. What kind of tips could you give women as far as communicating with their hairstylist if they're not really good at being clear and are expressing themselves? Yeah, I think one of the most important things is having photos to share because what you think is warm, what you think is cool, sometimes are very different or you think something's dark, you think something's light. Really looking at photos and looking at swatches because I think colors can be misinterpreted and lighting can be misinterpreted. And so really being clear on what about a certain, you know, you pull up a photo and you and your stylist working together to kind of understand what it is about that photo that you like. And you thinking about that too. It's like, why do I like this? Why do I think this would look good on me? So it's important to understand what you really want when you're trying to communicate it. The other thing you mentioned, and I think it kind of goes in with this, is finding the right stylist and salon that work for you. Because it's got to be a relationship. I agree. I mean, they say a large reason why somebody comes back to you is they also like you as a person. They like their hair. They like you as a person. So, you know, I would say don't get stuck in a rut. If you're consistently having a stylist that isn't giving you what you want or not listening and trying to understand what you want, then reach out, find somebody new, and I'm sure you'll be much happier. It might take a while to find the right fit. 
but long term you'll be happier rather than waiting in a relationship you're no longer fulfilled by. So if anyone listening in the greater Sacramento area wants to schedule an appointment with you or a consultation, what is the best way that people can find you? Your yeah, we're at 1430 20th Street, right in the heart of Midtown. You can reach out to me on Instagram at Sloan Wilder Salon. Same on Facebook. You can DM us. And then number is 916-878-8910. You can reach out to make appointments. And I can also get you into any of the other stylists at our salon. We have a great team. And I know people are going to see your hair, Carmen, and they're going to say they want to, they want their hair to be exactly like yours, but it's true. Carmen's hair is one of a kind. It's beautiful. It's thick and it's been a journey. So, <laughs> well, thanks to my fairy godmother who <laughs> makes my hair look like it does. <laughs> so, and I will make sure to include all of your information, your handles, your phone number in the show notes so that people can, if they, listen to this and said, oh, I got to keep plus and replay because she's talking too fast. Don't worry. It will all be included in the show notes. And you'll just need to go to my website, which is createthebestme.com forward slash EP008. And you can download this episode. So to wrap things up, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing your expertise and insight. And I look forward to having you on another show. Thanks so much, Carmen. Wow, ladies, what an insightful and inspiring episode we've had today with the amazing Paige Logan. We learned so much about the importance of communication with our hairstylists, avoiding hair disasters by taking time to understand our hair goals and maintaining healthy hair through the right hair care routine. I hope you're feeling inspired to take better care of your locks and have a more fulfilling relationship with your hairstylist. A huge thank you to Paige for joining us today and sharing her expertise. Remember, if you're in the greater Sacramento area and you're looking for an incredible hairstylist, make sure you check out Paige and Sloan Wilder Salon contact information in the show notes. If there's a topic that you'd like for me to cover in future episodes, please complete my video request form on the bottom of this page or wherever you're listening to this or watching it. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Create the Best Me. If you found this episode valuable, please make sure to subscribe and receive notifications for upcoming episodes. Until next time, keep dreaming big, take care of yourself, and remember You are beautiful, strong, and capable of creating the best version of yourself. Bye for now.